This resource is a kind of how-to guide about three different widely used tools or writing strategies that can help you make and more easily keep your commitments to reading, writing and thinking during your postgraduate studies. If you are a typical student, whether you are studying full-time or part-time, you probably have other work to do, paid or unpaid, and you may also be caring for children or other family members. Having so many demands on your time and headspace means that making and keeping a regular, steady commitment to focusing on your postgraduate research can be a challenge. Too often we start the week with the best intentions. Perhaps you have promised yourself you will spend a whole day or more writing chapter 3, or you will read 10 papers this week, or you will write a thousand words a day. And yet by the time the weekend rolls around, you may well have fallen short of these lofty goals because life got in the way and because you battled to juggle all the demands on your time. If this sounds in any way familiar, know that you are not alone. What you need, what all researchers need, are accessible, practical tools you can use as and when needed to enable you to fit reading and writing time into every week of your postgraduate journey in a way that makes this time spent productive. What follows are three tools you could consider using to enhance your own time use and productivity. The first tool that underpins the others in this resource is known as the Pomodoro Technique. There is a website resource which details the use of this tool, the link to which is underneath the video on this page. This is a basic summary of how the tool could work for you. The basic premise of the technique is to focus on working in connected 25-minute bursts of concentration. Each 25-minute period is termed a Pomodoro. After each 25-minute burst, you take a 5-minute break before working on another Pomodoro. Two Pomodoros connected together like this is an hour of focused reading or writing, and you can get a great deal done in a week if you can do two Pomodoros first thing in the morning, before you open email or tackle other tasks on your to-do list. Even better would be to connect four Pomodoros together into two hours of work interspersed with short breaks to make a cup of tea or use the bathroom or send a quick text message or quick email. You will almost certainly have other thoughts and concerns pop into your head while you are working through each Pomodoro. For example, write to my supervisor about the feedback she owes me or call the plumber about the leaking sink. Don't try too hard to force these thoughts away. Keep a notepad near you, pause for five seconds to quickly scribble a note to yourself for later and go back to the reading and writing activity that you're working on. When you pause for your five minute break, you can attend to the note if it can be resolved in five minutes. Otherwise, you can come back to it when you take your longer break after two, three or four Pomodoros have been completed. You can download Pomodoro timers from the Google Play or App stores. There are several free ones, or you can go to your nearest home store and purchase a timer that can be set to ring after 25 and five minutes. The main thing to find is a timer that will ring to alert you that it is time to stop. Try to get up and move around and stretch in each five minute break. And if you can, take a longer walk or stretch after your Pomodoros are all finished. Sitting for too long can be bad for your back and neck. The next tool is called free writing and uses a writing technique developed in the 1980s by a writing specialist in the United States called Peter Elbow. The basic premise is to use this timed approach to writing to literally free your thoughts from the shackles we usually impose on them. By this is meant that you should allow yourself either for five or seven minute bursts to ignore spelling, punctuation, proper sentence construction or any notion of the right kinds of things to write about. Rather, you should focus on your thoughts and getting them out of your head and onto the page in whatever form they may take. It is a form of brainstorming where you let your ideas flow without judging them until you have written them down. This is Often a useful tool if you are starting a piece of writing but are struggling to find an entry point, or after you have done a set of readings and would like to begin to write a chunk of a literature review or theory or methodology chapter. You will again need a timer, but this time you are only going to write for five or seven minutes. Choose a topic to focus on. For example, if you are beginning a proposal, it might be helpful to brainstorm in writing about your research problem. If you are starting the methodology chapter, it might be helpful to free write a bit about your research design or your rationale for choosing the method you are using. Set your timer, pick up your pen or settle at your keyboard, and in your research journal or in a Word document, just write for the allotted time. 
only real rule with free writing is not to stop writing until the time of pings. Don't stop to prejudge the usefulness or rightness of your ideas or the form of your sentences and so on. If you can create a few connected topics, for example, my research problem as free write one, my research questions as free write two, limitations of these as free write three, and an overview of the literature I will need to review and write about as free write four, and you gave yourself seven minutes per topic, you could spend a very productive and useful half an hour writing on your proposal or introductory thesis chapter. Some of what you have written may be cut or edited out later on, but you will have a base on which to build. The more you write, like this, just for yourself and make it part of your day, the easier you will find all the other writing you have to do as you go. Finally, we have shut up and write sessions. These are a popular tool for writers all over the world. If you are on Twitter, for example, you can probably join a virtual group that will meet once a week in your time zone to write. These virtual groups are fine if you are highly motivated to keep a meeting with invisible strangers once a week without pushing it aside to do other things. Most of us, though, would do better with a physical face-to-face -face commitment. The basic premise here is to meet with other writers at least once a week, preferably at a set time on a set day, and write in the same place, but without disturbing one another. You can use the Pomodoro technique to structure the shut up and write session, two Pomodoros if you have an hour long meeting, or four if you can meet for two hours. If you are on campus and your library has a postgraduate meeting space, you could arrange to meet here. Otherwise, choose a nice coffee shop that won't be too loud, or a mutually agreed upon place where you can set up laptops, research journals, and reading. The idea is to come together Spend a little time catching up and then settle down to write side by side in silence until the time is up. It's a form of positive peer pressure if you like. If you know that you have committed to being accountable to other people, it's easier to keep this writing time each week and you can feel energised by the thinking, typing and reading that is going on around you. Try to keep the group size manageable. Between three and six people is a good size for most coffee shop and library venues and keep it flexible. No punishment for people who can't come. If a group member does stop coming, rather let them know that they are missed and ask if perhaps they need to change the time and day to keep coming. This needs to feel like and be a supportive, mutually agreed on and shared space so that it is a pleasure to make the meeting each week and walk away having made progress. Hopefully you will find one or more of these tools useful to try out and use in making and keeping commitments to your writing on a regular basis.